right, so in this first tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to get a player ship into your game and get it moving back and forth with button presses. Let's get started. So first off, you're just going to need to get a graphic for your ship. I have this little pixel art ship that I created in Photoshop. And to drop a graphic into your game, all you really need to do is take that graphic, click and drag it down into your assets window. You'll see that little green circle with the plus sign. And there you go. We can now put it into the game. A couple of little things you're going to need to do. First of all, if you drag the player straight onto your hierarchy here, you'll notice that there's some problems. First of all, it's really small and it's also really blurry. That can be fixed pretty easily if you head down into your assets and click on the ship file. A couple things we need to do. First of all, to fix the size, you'll notice down here that I created this on a 32 by 32 grid. But up here it says that there's 100 pixels in every square. If I want my ship to take up a full square in the game, I want it to match the width of my actual ship. If I click apply now, you'll notice my ship got a lot bigger, but it did not fix the blurriness. Now the blurriness is simply to do with the filter we're using. Right now it's in bilinear, which is smoothing the edges between pixels, but because this is pixel art, we want nice crisp pixels. I'll click apply, and there we go. At this point, all that's left is a little bit of strange discoloration happening here, and we can fix that by changing the format. Let's move away from automatic and instead do RGBA 32-bit. Click apply, and now things are looking much better. At this point, I'm just gonna click on my move tool, click on my ship, and move it down to the bottom here in the center of the screen. Now that our ship is in the game, we can get started coding. I'm gonna click on the ship here, and over in my inspector, we're going to add a new component. And we're going to create one called, click new script, and we'll call this one player controller. You'll notice now that player controller has shown up in our assets window, and we can double click that to open it. All right, now the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to get our ship to move from side to side. So this can be done by accessing the transform component of the ship. If you take a look here, at the top of our player ship is our transform, which holds his position. And if I move it left and right, you'll notice that my X goes up and down. So that's what we're going to want to access is that X position. We're going to do this in our update function, which remember update runs once per frame, so about 60 times per second. And what we want to do is we want to access our transform. And what we want to do is use a geometry function called translate, which just means to slide around. And we want to translate it along a vector two. Now vector two is just a two coordinate variable, so it has an X and a Y. But after this, a vector two dot right. That will move our ship to the right. Nice and simple. Now when I test the game, you'll notice that my ship flies off the screen to the right, which is just as expected. The reason for this is because right now my ship is moving one unit to the right every single frame, so about 60 times per second, which is much faster than we want it to be moving. So instead of moving every frame, we're going to multiply this by time dot delta time, which is just a mathematical way of saying according to time. So now it will move one unit to the right every second. Already that's looking much better, but we want a little bit of control over the speed of our ship. We don't want it just to be moving at that speed all the time. So we're going to come up here underneath our class, and we're going to create a public variable. This one is going to be a float, which is a decimal number, and we'll call this one move speed. The reason we're making this one public is because we want it to show up in Unity so that we can change the value while we're playtesting the game. Now that we've created the variable, and for now let's actually just set it at, I'm going to set it at a value of 5, and then we'll come down here into our transform, and we're going to move to the right, but we're going to multiply that times our move speed, which will then be multiplied by time. It's moving very slowly, I could change that to 2, and it would get faster yet. I think 5 is the number I'm going to go with for my movement. All right, so we've got our ship moving, but at this point the player has no control and we want to change that. To do this, we're actually going to look at the input manager system that Unity has. So if you head up into the top of your screen, you go to Edit, Project Settings. You'll find a section in here, which is your input manager. And if you click on axes, you'll notice that there are all sorts of different inputs. There's one for your firing, jumping, submitting things, and horizontal movement is the one we're going to be working with. So you'll notice that automatically, if you push the left key, you'll move. 
in the negative direction, push right to move right, or A and D. You can change these and map whatever keys you want onto here. And you'll notice that the name of it is horizontal with a capital H. So to access this in our code, first of all, we're gonna create a brand new variable here. We'll make this one public. It's also gonna be a float. And we're just gonna call this one H input for a horizontal input. Now we need, at this point, the value, there's no value to that, and we want it to change depending on the button you're pressing. So we're gonna head down to our update here. All right, and our horizontal input is going to be equal to, we'll type input, so Unity will start looking for us to push a button. And what we want it to do is we want it to take the button we push, and we want, if it's left, we want it to turn it into negative one. If it's right, positive one. If we're not pushing anything, it'll be zero. The way to do this is by typing in get access raw which just translates our button press into one of those three digits. Now what we want it to check, so right now it doesn't know which input it's looking for, we want it to look at the horizontal input. And it gets this value from the input manager we just looked at. So now our horizontal input has a value. It will always either be negative one, zero, or one. Now we just need to add this value into our movement formula. So now we're always moving right, but if we go here and we type in times, H input, we now add our horizontal input to this so that if we're pushing left, it will actually make it a negative value so the ship will move left and the same if we push right. You'll notice because I made it public, we can now see that value here and that should change anytime we push the button in play mode. So you'll notice at first nothing's happening, but when I push right, it moves right, left moves left. You'll see that my H input is changing depending on the button press and I'm just gonna up my speed to five and we've got a nice responsive movement. Now one thing you'll notice is when I leave play mode, my movement speed resets back to one. Just any changes you make during play mode um, won't be saved, so you just have to save it here. All right, we've now got our ship moving. There's one last thing I wanna do, and that is simply to make some boundaries so that our ship can't go off of the screen. To do this, we're gonna to head to our hierarchy. I'm going to right click, and I'm gonna create an empty, and we're just gonna call this boundary. And what we're gonna do with this boundary is go to our inspector. We're gonna add a box collider 2D. And if you click edit collider, you can drag the edges. And essentially what we wanna just do is make a nice tall box here. I'll grab my move tool and move this one over to the left side. And as long as it's here, what it's gonna do is it'll be an object for our ship to bump up against so that it can't leave the screen. I'll go to my hierarchy here and hit command D to make a copy of that, which I'll now move to the other side. So I now have a boundary on each side for the ship to bounce into. At this point though, if I started playing, the ship would actually just go right through those boundaries because it doesn't have any physics applied to it or a collider itself. So we're just gonna add a box collider 2D to our ship. If you edit collider, you'll see mine actually sized pretty perfectly already, so I don't need to change that. The one other thing we need to do is while well, there's colliders right now, they're not actually going to interact with each other because there are no physics applied to our scene. To fix that, we're gonna add something called a rigid body 2D. You'll notice that this has mass and gravity and that sort of thing. Now, obviously we don't want gravity on our ship or it would fall off the screen, so we'll make our gravity scale zero. But other than that, we've now applied physics so it can collide with objects. You'll notice now that I can move around, but when I try to go left too far, I hit that wall and the same thing happens over on the other side. All right, we've got a ship moving. We've got it kept inside of the bounds. It's looking pretty good. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. If you are finding it useful, please be sure to click like or subscribe to the channel. Till next time, this is Matt with Night Run Studio. Cheers.